Hello everybody, my name is Eric the Goblin and today we're going to make a completely different kind of video. Um, I have long had a very vested interest in tabletop role-playing games and uh, I feel like right now would be a really good time to introduce my channel to uh, basic fantasy role-playing which is a old-school retro clone of the earlier Dungeons and Dragons editions. This one streamlines things and makes it really easy for players to learn. It is available very cheaply on Amazon for less than six American dollars, but you can also download it completely freely from the Basic Fantasy website. And today, I am actually making a video on how to create a character for a Basic Fantasy role-playing game. To do this, you will need a couple of things. You'll need some dice, three six-sided dice, specifically. We're going to choose different colors because fuck matching. You'll also need a pencil. You'll also need more grace than I do to be able to put that back in with one hand. Uh, you'll need a copy of the rules, but if you don't have access to a physical copy, you can download them online, and it is exactly the same. And you'll also need a piece of paper. I've taken the liberty of writing down some of the things that are necessary. And I abbreviate it because I know what they are, but um, the stats will be listed in the rules, and they use the classic array of Dungeons & Dragons stats. So, how do you make a character? following the steps in Basic Fantasy RPG. So, you're gonna take these three six-sided dice, you're gonna roll them, add that up. So this is a total of, what is that? Nine, 10, 11, 12. Take this pencil, and we're gonna write down strength of 12. And we're gonna do this for each of the stats. Fairly certain that was a five, but we're gonna just keep that like that, so. That looks like a total of 11. That looks like a 13 to me. That looks like a nice score. 14. So, for those of you who are unfamiliar, a score of 10 is considered average. But in this system, a score of 9 to 12 is within the realms of ordinary. So as you can see, this character is slightly tougher and smarter than average. So, just about average wisdom. So usually, I roll doo-doo, and I never get these nice scores. I would almost say this is an OP character. Seems like really obscenely good scores. So after you're done with that, you take the rules, and I use uh, paper clips to mark down important areas. And we're going to reference our scores with what's in the book. So we'll see. Anything that's nine to 12, has a zero. So this is zero, this is zero, and this is zero. Anything within the 13 to 15 range has a plus one. So you, this character is tougher, smarter, and likable. So, the next step is to try and figure out what we want to play now. So this being an older game, um, it sticks with the classic fantasy tropes of a dwarf, elf, halfling, and human. There's a man outside who is doing garden work and I can't control that. That sucks. <laughs> so we're gonna just do this random style to show you that you can really do whatever the hell you want. We're gonna grab a four-sided die. Go. And 
that is a two. So our rules say this is one, this is two. Our character is an elf. Great, I hate elves. Stupid, long, knife ear, pretentious assholes, cool. The elf has a couple things that are interesting about him, but more importantly, I hate them. So we're not even gonna look at that. We're gonna do the same with classes. This game also is big on limiting options for classes. So you'll see you'll have cleric, fighter, magic user, which is basically your wizard, and thief. We're gonna do the same thing we did for race with class. And that looks like two. So our elf is a fighter, cool. Stupid, fucking, idiotic elf fighter, whatever. I hate this guy already, I can't wait for him to die. So normally, the fighter has a hit die of 1d8. But the special rule with elves is that they can't have a hit die bigger than C6. So even though he's a fighter, he's always gonna be a weakling, weaker than normal fighters. What does that mean? That means that his HP, which would have been an eight if he was any other race, is now a six. And because he's a little tougher than normal, it goes from six to seven. So if I had an eraser, I would have erased that, and I don't. So cool. Armor class, AC, you see that? That's how hard it is to hit your character. Starts at 11. And if I was graceful at all, I'd have a bonus. But since I'm a fucking average Joe Elf that I hate already, it's armor class 11. I feel like I need to drink, hold on. It's very important to have booze when you're rolling up characters because you never know how mad you're gonna get with the character you get. And it's pretty important to make sure that you don't get tilted. No zdravi. Cool, whatever. So the next step after that, you're gonna take these three six-sided dice again. You're gonna roll them, add them up. I'm getting really lucky rolls, I don't know why. What is that, 15? I think that's 15. 11, 12, 13, 45, yes, yeah, 15. I'm nowhere near drunk, don't, just stop, get off my case. 15, and then you multiply that by 10. That means that our elf has 150 gold pieces. So not only do I hate him because he's an elf and he's a weakling, but he also has a lot of money. So I already have an idea of what kind of guy he is. He's like a prince. Look at his fucking stupid ass stats. He's healthy, so he probably ate and worked out nice. He's smart, he went to school, and people like him because he's likable and he's charming. Fuck this guy. This guy's name is fucking Lance. The worst name ever. You name your kid Lance when you hate him. Anyway, you got your money. You're gonna go here and go shopping. So use your money, buy your stuff, go on your shopping spring. And at that point, you're basically done. The only other thing that needs to be filled out is a name, like I said. Um, you know, uh, once you get your armor, let's just pick an armor just so you understand how that works. We're gonna say that uh, he doesn't like metal armor because it chafes him. So we're gonna take that leather armor. Leather armor, which costs about 20 gold, I think. So he's down from 150 to 130 gold. So in the book, it says that leather armor puts his AC at 13. So he's a little harder to hit. And that's about it. That's all there really is to this. The other things that are involved are the attack bonus, which is how more likely you are to hit. And you'll see that a level one fighter has an attack bonus of plus one. Here's a spoiler. Every fucking class has an attack bonus of plus one. Now, if I had a strength bonus, that would also add to that, but I don't because he's weak. And if I had a dexterity bonus, that would make it go up for range attacks, but I don't. 
because he's average Joe. Do you see why I hate Lance? Fuck you, Lance. Fucking piece of shit. And the very last thing that you need to do, which is really something that doesn't come up too often, but these are called saving throws. Back in the day, you had saving throws against things like poison and death and magic wands, and the DM would just pick one at random for whatever situation he wanted to see if you could survive at. And it wouldn't even make sense. You would roll death ray to see if you avoided tripping. Tripping. So level one, fighter, has a death ray of 12. How that works is, you're gonna write that right there. And you're basically gonna go down the line. Magic wand of 13. I just abbreviate petri paralysis petrify to stone because that's exactly what's happening. Dragon breath, 15. And spells, 17, I think. Cool. So that's it. I've taken you down the road to making a character for a basic fantasy RPG. If this was at all helpful to you, I am very glad. Thank you. Goodbye.